thanks for being here at New England Veg Fest. How was it? My pleasure. Yeah, it was really good. Very busy, and I saw a lot of people eating delicious food, and the vibes were good, and the speeches were packed out. So it was, yeah, a quality day. Is this your first time in uh, the New England area? Yeah, it is. I've never been here before. I'll definitely be coming back there, hopefully. And did you fly all the way um, from Australia for this? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I go wherever I'm invited. So if someone wants me to do a speech, I don't care where it is, I'll go. If there's a crowd, I'll, I'll happily be there. Awesome. What is your favorite part about being a vegan advocate and what is your least favorite part? My favorite part about being a vegan advocate is feeling like, or knowing that I'm contributing to making this world a more peaceful place, where we respect each other more, where we take more care of our environment and where we make choices that are more in alignment with the kind, loving, compassionate people that we all strive to be. So I really feel good knowing that I'm helping other people do that same thing. And personally, the hardest part of me being a vegan advocate is how much I travel and therefore it's a bit lonely at times and things like that. But I think sometimes you, you know, there's a lot in life that can be bigger than your own. And I think when the state of animals and this planet is where it is right now, that sometimes you just have to make sacrifices, you know, that are quite worthy of, of being made. So although there can be some challenges with being a vegan advocate for me and for others, at the end of the day, the message is so important and so good that they're worth making. Great. So we live in the age of information. Why do you think that more people aren't vegan right now? People have been eating animal products for a long, 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 long time and people are conditioned to believe that they need to for their health, that it's natural, that it's normal, that it's necessary. It's just the lies we've been fed and the myths that we've been told and sometimes it takes a little bit of time for that conditioning to, to clear. So although I think everyone would agree with the philosophy of veganism causing the least amount of harm to each other as possible and you know once people realize that the food's delicious that it's healthy that this and that you know once they realize that they don't actually have any objections that hold any weight to being vegan most people will go vegan some never will because they're stubborn but i think yeah it can take time you know change takes time and you know all we can do is our best to spread the message as fast as possible doesn't mean it's going to happen overnight but you know i don't really try to think about that i just think more about the change that is happening and how many people are being influenced and making change. And that, you know, I think that's a better thing to focus on. Right. It's almost like they have to unlearn as much as they have to learn. Totally, absolutely, yeah. Because people are really set in their ways all of the time when it comes to food and things like that. Right. But the good news is we've got everything on our side. You know, we've got the health benefits, the environmental benefits, the obvious animal cruelty involved that everyone says they're against. So we've got everything on our side and that's why I think it's only logical that over time, you know, the scales will tip where it's pretty much a vegan world. And that's just normal. And that seems very likely impossible and logical for me. I agree. Um, so in your speech, you explained that you were only able to see the concept of animal exploitation and slaughter with a new set of eyes sort of after you had encountered a healthy vegetarian. Um, so there's actually a term that an author invented for this. It's like reverse deja vu. It's called vujade, yeah. where you can see something with a new set of eyes. Um, but for a lot of people, they can't. They don't have that kind of revelation or that paradigm shift because they say they just don't want to know. Sure. Um, so like, how do you think we can kind of get through to that, like, so that they do want to know? They might not want to see animal cruelty. That's okay. You can show them a delicious vegan meal or a vegan recipe. They might not be interested in the health benefits. Maybe you can show them some things that happen to the environment. I mean, people generally care about something involved in veganism. The beauty of it is that it covers so many aspects. It's so all-encompassing, you know? Starving children, like all these different things. People generally are gonna care about something. If they don't care about any of that, maybe you can get them with just how incredible the food is and how much better it is for their health. I think everyone's different. Everyone's got a different set of reasons why they don't think they can go vegan. Some people don't think they care. I didn't care, but you know, I started on my journey with learning about the health benefits and things like that. I think anyone can change. You know, very few people will never ever change, I believe. And so I think it's just about learning the individual person, 
what's your sticking point, what's stopping you, what lies do you believe, what myths are you clinging on to, and then just counteracting that with the truth. They think it's expensive, show them how cheap it is. If it thinks they think they're just gonna eat lettuce and tofu, show them some delicious curry or some ice cream or whatever, and just slowly just cut those objections out of their, you know, out of their life. Um, you have said that um, you know the the only re reasons really why people continue to eat animals. You say you know what what are we doing this for if we're not doing it to be healthy, um, taste, habit, tradition, and convenience. But do you think it's also about feeding our egos in a way, like asserting that superiority um, for reasons other than survival feeds our egos? Do, do you think? Um, yeah, partly for some people I'm sure that would be it, you know, thinking that they're better than others. You know, I even see that in the vegan community. Sometimes I think some people go vegan because they want to be able to say that they're better than someone else, you know? Like, I guess, you know, that's a whole other, like, ego is a definite thing that we humans have and some of us have it more strongly than others and sure that's probably a reason you know ego why some people will wear a big fur coat with like blatant animal cruelty you know i mean there's no more cruelty in fur than in any other animal product but in our society it's it's quite seen it's seen as worse by general people and maybe out of ego people say i don't care i am better than these animals i want to look good yeah, I mean, that probably has a part of it as well, sure. Um, let's see. So people often use best case scenarios, either ones that they imagine or ones that they've seen to justify animal exploitation, farming animals. You know, I live on a street with like the best case scenario of a farm, but obviously yeah. all those animals are still gonna be sent to slaughter. Um, exactly. So what would you say is wrong, uh, to people who just don't know, what would you say is wrong with animal exploitation even under these best possible idyllic yeah. circumstances? Animals aren't here for us to use, they're not here for us to decide how their life's going to be and treat them in any way that we see fit, even if they are at a farm where they do get treated respectfully for their entire life. I mean, this is like tiny, tiny percentage of places where this might actually happen to animals. There's always cruelties involved, you know? There's always cruelties, like for example, with chickens, sometimes they cut their beaks off to prevent them killing each other with their beaks. So they kind of see it, no, but we did it for the right reasons. We, you know, um, we did it so that they wouldn't be so cruel to each other, but there's still a cruelty there. There's often cruelties, even on the best organic free range farm, there's often still things that need to be done that are cruel and cause harm to the animals. Let's say there was a place where none of that existed. At the end of the day, they all get sent to the slaughterhouse. And even if a slaughterhouse existed where they didn't feel pain or even see it coming, which doesn't exist, there's, there's almost always terror and pain and suffering involved. But even if it was a place where they just went to sleep and they died, it's still wrong to kill someone. It's still wrong to take the life of an individual who didn't want to die no matter how it's done, you know, murder is murder and slaughter is slaughter and of course there are better ways to murder a human that cause less suffering than others. Same with slaughtering an animal, you can slaughter them in ways that can, they can be in pain and suffering for an hour or a minute or none at all, but at the end of the day, it's still the wrong thing to do, to kill them, to take their life, their most precious gift and that's what happens with every single animal product, they all end up at the slaughterhouse. But even further than that, animals aren't here for us to use. Exactly. They're not our property, we don't own their lives, and they're not. it's not for us to decide what to do with them and how they should live. Right, because some, some people maybe like they own a chicken, a backyard chicken, and they decide you know, they can't do it and they're gonna let them live. Well, they still bred that animal into existence. Uh, you know, <coughs> the males were at the hatchery were all slaughtered, and there's just so much that people don't see. Sure, you know? it's the idea that they're our property and they're not. Right. Um, so let's see, I'm sure you've met many vegans through your advocacy. Um, people often stereotype us as being a certain way, but can you describe some of the most surprising and diverse vegans that you've personally encountered? Oh man, I've met thousands of vegans, I've met all kinds of vegans. It's as diverse as any, any group, and pro probably even more actually, because I mean, it's probably the most diverse group, actually, of people I can, I can think of because 
we have something in common that is so common. Right. You know, we don't have to believe in a specific God or anything like that. What we have in common is that we're against animal cruelty. Almost anyone can fit into that category. And the difference is that vegans are just living in alignment with that belief. So, I mean, I've met like professional surfers and tiny, you know, young kids and 70 year olds and I mean, just rock stars, rappers. I've met so many different types of vegans because what we share is something, yeah, that it's so, it's just so like fundamental in pretty much every human. Right, that's awesome. What would you say to people who see veganism as a set of restrictions? Well, in a way it is, but that, even though it is kind of a set of restrictions because we are not eating certain foods or wearing certain things, we're far from restricted. You know, we're, we've just stopped taking something that was never ours in the first place. And there is truly an abundance of, I mean, there's literally millions of vegan recipes out there. There's countless different materials we can use for clothing. There's every single toiletry item that you could get that's not vegan. You can get the vegan version. So pretty much, I mean, even with the foods that we don't eat anymore, meat, cheese, milk, eggs, there's vegan meat, there's vegan cheese, there's vegan eggs, there's vegan ice cream. So even the things that we've decided not to have, we've got a vegan version of everything. I mean, and personally, and for most vegans I know, I eat more different types of food now than ever before. My, it's, I've tried all these new foods, I eat all these new recipes, I'm always trying new things. And I love food more than ever before, like the foods I eat. So you think you're gonna just eat lettuce and tofu, but actually, there's an abundance of foods and they're phenomenal and every vegan I speak to agrees that they eat better now than they did before which is ironic but that's just how it is so yeah, it's the it's, same for me yeah it's so good I expanded my palate if totally anything. totally yeah it's really cool just a couple more questions uh, what do you think is the single most important tip for effective communication about veganism because you know, people can shy away from talking about it. It's not always a, a fun topic. So yeah. what do you say to that? Well, I think the most important thing for me is just to remember that I'm not trying to make enemies or make anyone feel bad. I'm trying to make people get excited about something that's going to be better for them, something that I'm excited about because it's improved my life so much more and I understand the positive impact it has on the lives of others on this planet. So I'm not around to try to make people feel bad or, or blame and shame anybody. I think the best thing you can do, you know, like Martin Luther King said, use love. Love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. I think that's the best thing we can do with advocacy is come from a place of love and compassion. That's the behavior we want everyone to see. You know? And so we should model that behavior. That's the kind of world we want to live in. And if you come from that place, it's better for you as well because if you're being loving and compassionate, you don't have to worry so much if they're going to take it personally or get offended or anything like that. And also, you don't have to generate those negative feelings inside of you. And that's better for you for longevity and your own mental health and things like that as well. But also, gratefully, it's the best way to inspire people to change. So I think I th you do a good job with that. because Thanks. And you share... Um, that you know you were there too you didn't know what veganism was you thought it was something weird and extreme and I think that helps people relate yeah as opposed to just telling them I did too because it's hypocritical to go vegan and then straight away be telling everyone what bad people they are right. you know like it doesn't make sense people just don't know or they don't get it or they believe a bunch of lies that's keep keeping them clinging on to what they're doing mm -hmm. and you know you just got to help people like you've got to come from a place of I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to help you do better, I've got so much benefit out of this, you can get that benefit as well. This is the right thing to do, hear me out. Yeah. Cool. And then finally, um, what are your thoughts on a pro-intersectional approach to vegan advocacy where we are um, sensitive to the fact that, you know, that there's so much oppression going on with animals and humans and kind of incorporating that into our advocacy and, and making sure that we're um, speaking out against all forms of oppression as vegans. For sure. I think, I mean, I know that veganism is about non-human animals mostly, but I don't think it makes sense to do all this work for non-human animals, you know, and end their oppression while contributing to any other type of oppression. Humans are animals as well. It's about non-violence and non-oppression 
to all animals. That includes humans. In my opinion, veganism includes humans, you know, because what, that doesn't make sense to show respect to pigs, cows, chickens, fish, and then, you know, hit your partner when you get home or anything like that. That's just not vegan to me. So I definitely think that an intersectional approach makes sense because it's all connected, you know. Um, oppression is oppression, and whoever the victim is, I mean, we should be standing up for all the victims. Right. And so you're done being voiceless. No more um, <laughs> not speaking for a year, right? No, we'll be hearing no a lot more, more from you. I oh, hope. I haven't shut up since. That was a few years ago now. <laughs> good. Well, yeah. good, because we get a lot out of it. So thank you so good. much. Thank really you. really appreciate it. Thanks a lot.